My name is Damith Kunaratni, and I'm a Group Product Manager at Google Cloud. And this is my colleague, Victor Salve, who is a Senior Product Manager at Google Cloud. Today, we'll be speaking to you about Google's new approach to software supply chain security. Before I dive into the details, I'd like to turn it over to Victor. He's going to take you through a quick overview on why software supply chain security is such a hot topic these days. Hey, thanks, Damith. Well, let's start with some background on software supply chains and why their security is top of mind these days. Now, most modern software products are typically made up of the source code your organization writes, um, as well as third-party software in the form of dependencies. Typically then a build process will combine these sources and output packaged software, which in turn can be run directly by your organization or consumed by other parties as their dependencies. So the dependencies can either be open source software or commercial off the shelf products. But in either case, the software will have its own set of contributors, its own SDLC process, and typically, uh, its own set of third-party dependencies. So as you can see, this constitutes a supply chain where you can be a supplier, a consumer, and oftentimes you're actually both. So this has the potential to leave your SDLC in a highly vulnerable state. You know, you're consuming software from a wide range of sources um, with largely unknown set of contributors, each with varying degrees of security in their own SDLC processes. And in fact, attacks on the software supply chain are increasing at an alarming rate. You know, Sonotype has noted a 650% surge in attacks year over year. Gartner predicts that by 2025, nearly half of the world's organizations will experience some form of supply chain attack. So at Google Cloud, we've identified a wide range of attack vectors across the SDLC. And I think while most organizations are focused on sort of the top priority obvious vectors like source code analysis and vulnerability scanning, uh, we're seeing real world threat actors, you know, attacking across the entire spectrum here. And this includes things like compromising build systems um, and package repositories, as well as injection of compromised packages and a whole lot more. So the question is, what can we do to increase the security posture of our software development lifecycle? With this in mind, we're excited to introduce Google Cloud software supply chain security solution, Software Delivery Shield. Software Delivery Shield aims to provide a holistic solution to this problem, spanning the software development lifecycle, dependencies, and cloud runtime environments in which you operate your software. We've baked in a lot of Google's internal best practices into this solution, such as a trust-based policy system. And we understand that this is a journey we're all on together. So we've provided a stepwise implementation pathway rooted in the supply chain levels for software artifact standard, commonly referred to as SALSA. And each component of our solution can be used together or independently in combination with existing products you use in your software development process. Software Delivery Shield is aligned to the pillars of your software development lifecycle. Within Develop, we're shifting security left into the developer's local workstation and IDE. On the supply side, we're helping to improve the security posture of your dependencies. When it comes to CI/CD, we're helping to secure your build pipelines with out-of-the-box security capabilities for building both containers and non-container applications. And our container runtimes now provide security posture management for running workloads. Lastly, we utilize a trust-based policy engine to ensure only those images that meet your policies make it into your runtimes. Let's dig a bit deeper into all of this. Starting with Develop, Cloud Workstations provides a fully managed development environment in the cloud, supporting popular IDEs like VS Code and IntelliJ. On top of this, Cloud Workstations comes with a number of built-in security features to help IT administrators and operators secure your development environments. Administrators are able to control private ingress and egress while using VPC security controls to prevent data exfiltration. 
This can help ensure your source code doesn't leave your organization's network perimeter. Cloud workstations also provides force image updates and granular IAM access policies to make sure that developers are always using the latest secure development environments. Continuing with develop, Cloud Code Source Protect brings dependency vulnerability and license awareness directly into the IDE without blocking productivity. This all works seamlessly with Cloud Workstations. With Cloud Workstations and Cloud Code Source Protect, your IT administrators and developers can save hours in securely managing developer environments and creating secure applications. We're also providing new artifact management capabilities to help secure your dependencies. Artifact Registry now supports virtual and remote repositories, further strengthening dependency government and simplifying access points. On-push vulnerability scanning in Artifact Registry with container analysis has been expanded to include support for Go and Maven containers. We also now support scanning of non-containerized Maven packages. And now, a software bill of materials dependency list can also be generated for containerized applications, allowing you to gain a better understanding of third-party dependencies. In addition to this, Assured Open Source Software provides a portfolio of over 250 Java and Python open source packages. These packages are built in our secured pipelines with software delivery shield products and are regularly scanned, analyzed, and fuzz tested for vulnerabilities. When it comes to building applications securely, Cloud Build has you covered by providing out of the box Salsa level three builds. In addition to already providing ephemeral and isolated build environments, Cloud Build now provides you with authenticated and non falsifiable build provenance. This is available for containerized applications and Maven and Python packages, providing you with the ability to audit how your applications were built with zero configuration security guardrails in place. We're also introducing new security insights into Cloud Build through a new security insights panel. This will allow you to immediately understand the security posture of built artifacts. The Security Insights panel will display the Salsa level build, vulnerability, dependency, and build provenance information for the built artifacts. And once your applications are deployed to GKE or Cloud Run, additional security insights will be present right at the runtime. GKE provides continuous runtime vulnerability scanning for your workloads and also analyzes your Kubernetes configuration against the PodSpec security standards, highlighting deviances. And the Cloud Run built-in security panel has been enriched with Salsa build level, vulnerability, dependency, and build provenance information for your containers. Finally, binary authorization's trust-based policy system can be used to turn all these security insights into actionable policies. With trust-based policies, you can create attestations for specific processes that need to be followed or for tools that need to be used before applications can be permitted to run. These policies can then be applied and enforced on runtime such as GKE and Cloud Run. Now, Victor will show you how everything comes together. So let's look at how these components work together to improve your software supply chain security posture. We're gonna do a demo and we're gonna start in cloud workstations, wearing our developer hat. Cloud code will warn us about vulnerabilities in our IDE. We'll then trigger a CI CD pipeline with cloud build, creating the images with build provenance and displaying our salsa level. We'll then use artifact registry and container analysis to store and automatically scan our images for vulnerabilities and also generate the S bomb. Next, we'll see how binary authorization policies gate our deployment to only trusted images. And then finally, we're gonna check out the new GKE security posture feature, uh, which shows us security concerns in the context of running workloads. Let's get started. Okay, let's start with the developer environments. Cloud Workstations provides customized developer environments that allows developers to get up and running quickly with just the pieces that they need uh, for a particular project. We can create custom profiles that can be set up within private networks. We can minimize data exfiltration risks, and we can customize the environment. So I can do things like select the CPU, 
RAM, and even GPU uh, profiles that I need. I can also do things like select the IDE that's going to run. I can also select a completely customized container image, and that would allow me to fully have control over all of the tools running within that. Um, we're going to be working in a Java environment, so I'm going to launch our Java dev profile here, which has all the tools I need, including the uh, Eclipse Temerin JDK. I also have Maven installed, so we're going to be working within a Maven project today. I also have Artifact Registry's new remote repositories configured. Now, this allows for proximal caching of my dependencies for speeding things up. And I've also got that configured, of course, within my POM XML to read from that registry. So I can get started with my Maven work. Let's shift gears and talk about dependencies. And let's talk about securing those dependencies against vulnerabilities. Cloud Code has a new capability called Source Protect. Now, Source Protect will provide linting style, as you can see, this kind of red underlining, uh, linting style notification of vulnerabilities that are lurking within the dependencies that you define. In this case, I'm again looking at a POM XML file. Um, I've got the Spring Boot framework here, and you can see all the various uh, vulnerabilities that are lurking within those dependencies. Now, if I update one of the versions here, one of the main versions, to something more current, you can quickly see that the count drops from 15 to 12 problems. And I can work through this POM XML and address all of these problems. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually just going to go ahead and commit. And we're going to kick off a build within Cloud Build. Now, Cloud Build can be configured to run all those same tools that we just talked about. In this case, I've again, I've got my Maven uh, builders there. I've also got Docker. And uh, Docker is going to help me containerize my application and ultimately push to Artifact Registry the compiled image. Now, I've also configured a vulnerability scanning uh, policy. On push, I'm going to be scanning for vulnerabilities. Uh, what this policy does is it will fail the build if that policy has not been met, basically, if the thresholds are exceeded. In this case, you can see that it has. Now, we know that there was at least 12 problems still lurking there. And you can see that uh, in this case, Cloud Build caught those problems. Um, and we were able to stop the build without proceeding down toward a, a deployment. Now, we could take a look at the actual image that was produced. And this is stored and housed in Artifact Registry. Artifact Registry provided that vulnerability scanning, basically. Um, on push, it automatically scans. And you can see that, in fact, aside from the, the eight mediums, I have quite a few highs and criticals lurking here, both Maven and OS level uh, vulnerabilities. So my vulnerability policy stops CICD from deploying this image. But what if I tried to deploy it directly with kubectl, so short circuiting the CICD process? Now I'm going to do that, and I'm going to try, but you'll see that it actually fails. And the reason uh, my deployment fails is because I have a admission control policy set up that blocks any image that has not accumulated proper trust. Now this is done by a system called binary authorization. And binary authorization can be configured to uh, set out a policy where you, you can specify all the trust factors required. In this case, I only have two. I have that it be built by Cloud Build is one, and that we have a vulnerability scan uh, as, as the second. So as a result, I'm going to have to just go through and fix all of the problems uh, within this particular uh, application. Um, so I'm going to use uh, Cloud Code here to help me do that. As you can see that Cloud Code will help me find not just the direct dependencies, but also ones like this, which is a transitive dependency. And uh, that would be very challenging to find otherwise. So let's fast forward a bit. We've fixed all those problems. And now we can kick off another uh, another build by triggering it via via push. And we'll do that now. And we'll see that once this thing finishes, it actually passed and we were able to get through that vulnerability uh, policy step and on toward a CD uh, via cloud deploy. We can also take a look at a new capability called Security Insights within Cloud Build. This provides information such as the salsa level that we attained, um, the build integrity of this particular item. 
So we can see that there's no vulnerabilities lurking here. We can also inspect all of the, uh, the dependencies that are in this particular image. We can also look at the provenance of this image. Now provenance uh, is, think of it as the recipe. So this is all of the inputs, including all the build steps, um, including the builders that were used, like Maven in this case, and Docker. We can also see things like the fact that we went through that vulnerability uh, policy step. My application has been deployed. It's running in GKE. Now let's take a look at the security posture a little more closely using the new security posture management capability within GKE. Now this provides an analysis of my running workloads on the various clusters I have. In this case, I have three clusters. I have 13 running workloads. Um, and it looks at things like configuration concerns. Now these are pod spec considerations. Also, of course, vulnerabilities. So this is a, a daily scan of OS vulnerabilities that comes with GKE. So I have a drill down interface where I can slice by various perspectives like concern or namespace workload. I can also do things like filter by severity. So in this case, I'm gonna prioritize my time and focus on the most important things. In this case, I have a, you know, a high CVSS score uh, vulnerability with a fix uh, in at hand so I can go ahead and remediate. I also know where to remediate. And this is one of the great things about security posture management in GKE. It ties together not just the problems, but it pulls them in to the context of where it is, where in your workloads these things reside. Let's take a look at our application, the Maven application we just deployed. And we can go and filter for that particular cluster. And I can see my demo app application. And I can see that there are actually two suggestions, some medium level suggestions. One is that we're running as root. The other problem here is that my pod security spec actually allows for privilege escalation. Armed with where it is and how to fix it, I can just update the YAML and make the changes to secure this particular workload. So that was our demo. We saw how Google Cloud's developer tools, build platform, artifact management, and our trust-based policy engine work together to secure your software development lifecycle. While GKE now provides built-in security posture awareness and remediation. Thanks for the great demo, Victor. All of these features are available in preview and you can get started with our quick start tutorials to learn more about software supply chain security and how to secure your software development lifecycle, take a look at our software supply chain security site. And don't forget to check out some of our other sessions on cloud workstations, simplifying the building of modern apps, CICD, GKE, and Anthos. Thanks for tuning in and learning about how Google Cloud is looking to secure your software supply chain. Enjoy the rest of Google Cloud Next.